So first thing, when you guys are doing a problem, first thing I always do, as I mentioned, is identify my a. Well, first thing, I want to make sure it's set equal to 0, right? Set equal to 0, that's good. Set thing, label my a, b, and c. I'm not going to be lazy and try to skip that step. It's just very, very helpful, especially when you're texting on your phone or looking on your phone to go through it. Um, so now I'm just going to find my discriminant. So my discriminant in this case is going to be 7 squared minus 4 times b times c. Everybody follow me? OK. So therefore, I have 49 minus 4 times 12 is going to be 48. And then that's going to be times negative 10. So that's going to be um, 24, so 480. Yes? No? Yes. <laughs> it's my sister's FaceTiming. I don't know if I did it on Max or not. I just want to see if she'll answer. It'll be kind of funny. <laughs> So therefore, we have 529. Is 529 a square number? Does anybody know? Can anybody type in the calculator see if 529 is a square number? Huh? 23. Cool. So we have 23 as a square number, right? So it's a square number. So what does that tell us? I guess I accidentally did that. So if we have a square number, what does that tell us? I'm sorry, I'm sorry. This is a square number, right? 529 is a square number. So that tells us we're going to have two real rational solutions, right? If I told you guys to write down the real rational solutions, that's what you do. But that's not what we're doing today. Right now, what we're going to be doing is solving, OK? So in this case, what we're going to do is I'm asking you to actually solve. Now, what are some ways that we could solve this? We could try to factor this problem, correct? I Actually, I forgot to go on this. We could try to factor this, right? Or you could do completing the square. Does this look like fun factoring? No. Does it look like fun even completing the square? You have to factor out a 12, and then and it's just not going to be fun, right? So the other thing we can do is completing the or sorry, is the quadratic formula. So the quadratic formula, so the solutions, remember the solutions are the x-intercepts. So the solutions are x equals opposite of b plus or minus the square root of b squared minus 4 times a times c all over 2 times a. All right? You're going to want to write this down. This is the quadratic formula, which I didn't finish up. Now, what I want you guys to understand is we practice the discriminant. Why is the discriminant so easy? Why is the discriminant so necessary? One, it tells us how many solutions and what type of solutions we are. But then also, do you guys see how the discriminant is part of the quadratic formula? So guess what? I can plug the discriminant under the square root. I already did half of the quadratic formula. Now I'm just going to plug in a and b. So I have x equals opposite of b, which is negative 7, plus or minus the square root of 529 all over 2 times a, which is 12. Now we know what the square root of 529, 529 is, right? It was 23. So I have x equals negative 7 plus or minus 23 over 24. Then remember, guys, that he said it was two real rational solutions, right? So what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to find both of them. So negative 7 plus 23, so we have to do plus and minus. Negative 7 plus 23 is going to be 16. And then 16 over 24. So we could say x equals 16 over 24. And then let's do negative 7 minus 23 is going to be a negative 30. Or x equals negative 30 over 24. Now, can I simplify both of those fractions? Yes. This comes down to 2 thirds. This goes down to 6, so that would be 5, 5 fourths, negative 5 fourths. And then so your solution set would be negative 5 fourths, 2 thirds. Two real rational. Are those both rational numbers? Yeah. 
Yeah, of course they are. So I still have to 